prior to so the application uh, planning commission, however, pre application and uh, the planning office has come out to, to view the property. And I did ask at the time whether or not it was feasible to put a property on that land, and the answer is yes, as long as I went to all the guidelines laid down by the planning officer, which I did. I swapped the garage over, which, which was recommended by the planning officer, from uh, the right hand side of the house to the left. So it didn't pose on the view from the opposing next door property. Um, as far as all the um, from Stobel Massey Road restricting their views, you can actually see their houses from two, um, on the two virtual road because of the overgrowth of the trees. And some of the gardens on that actually put fences across halfway down the gardens and just let the trees just take hold. Um, as regards to uh, the impact on the, the area, the house which is proposed does sit well in the surrounding areas. It, it, it does not have to count with the rest of the houses in that road. I can't see why the objection would be for that. Um, Well, again, we don't believe that this is what can be described 
as, as fitting in well. This would, would appear to local residents to be nothing more than a blot on the landscape uh, with the existing houses. Certainly doesn't fit in with them, certainly doesn't fit in with the street scene. Uh, the National Planning Policy Framework states local planning authorities should consider the case for setting out policies to resist inappropriate development of residential gardens. For example, where development cause harm to local area. It's clear that if this development is allowed, it would cause harm to the local area. We go on to opinions and immunity issues, uh, and it talks about that the dwelling is to be constructed within close proximity to the same boundary with number four. Planning officers recognise recognize that. And it talks about the two story elements of the dwelling being situated between four and six. 0.5 metres from the side boundary of the Ezra Floats. That's, you know, less space than we've got between me and you, Chairman. That's how close it's going to be. In terms of the visual proposed, proposed dwelling, the house would sit within the street scene and well very close, and will be at the end of the road, because it's considered that the site of the dwelling is not as a character of well very close. Again, the planning officer may believe it's not as a character of well very close. However, we believe it clearly is. There are no detached properties in Wellbury Close. There's no other backland development in Wellbury Close or the surrounding area. So this development, if approved, would simply not fit in with the street scene. The planning officer points out that many of the properties in Gersham Road have large gardens with depths of up to 40 metres. And that's another reason why this application does not fit in at all. It would, it would not sit in with the garden lines. And while many of these properties do not have the potential for real access, some do. And they could be developed in a similar way as the current proposal. The proposed dwelling, this is flagged again from the policy, the proposed dwelling would form past the street scene well very close and would be located at the end of the close within the turning cap. Just remember that the turning cap. The application plan shows vehicle access for off road parking. Well, Chairman Members, that turning cap was put in for a reason. When Wellbury Close was built, I'm, I'm almost sure if we went back into the archives and delved through, there will be a condition to say a turning cap had to be provided. And that this application seeks to remove that condition, remove the turning cap at the top of Wellbury Close, and make life a little more difficult, particularly for the owners of 14 and 16. Objections have been raised with regard to the impact of development on local wildlife and gardens, according to the planning reports. But following consultation with World Wildlife, it's been acknowledged that the area is not a known bat haven. If that is the case, then why does the Fair the Notary Committee section on the, at the end of the report state bats are known to be active in this area? They either are or they're not. The planning officer seems to, seems to say they're not in one paragraph, but then puts a note at the end to say they are. In terms of the impact on the neighbouring gardens, again, from the planning report, the development will be within close proximity to the side boundary of four gears of road and the rear boundary of two or three sort of massive road. That is fact. We then go on to separation distances. And the report states the sighting of the dwelling meets the council's current interface distances of 21, window, 21 metres window to window and 14 metres window to blank elevation. The properties in Sword and Massey Road are approximately 30 metres, and number two and number four goes for 21 metres away window to window. The development does not introduce window to window of walking to the dwellings on the very close. Well, Chairman Members, again, why then does Condition 6 state <coughs> on insertion of the windows hereby approved the first floor to the south facing side elevation for be fitted with fixed and obscure glazing? up to a height of 1.7 metres from the finished first floor, internal floor level, and shall be permanently retained in that condition thereafter. And the reason for that, according to the plan officer, is to have regard to residential community. There either is overlooking or there isn't, and if there isn't, there doesn't need to be fixed into your window in any part of that property. So I, I have to take issue with the separation distances. With regard to the applicant saying that with the pre-app, the officer went out, yes they do, pre-app officers do go out, I've seen the pre-app letter, it says in principle, it doesn't say we would allow you to build a house on that site, it says in principle, and I think there's a very, very distinct difference between in principle and allowing. 
So in conclusion, as you can see, our interpretation of policy HS, HS4, we believe, has equal merit to that of the planning officers. And we're simply saying that there are sustainable reasons for refusal, and we ask the committee to seize on those reasons and refuse this application. Thank you. Um, once again, we have an application to build uh, in, a, in a basis in his back garden. Um, and I think it's probably a reflection of Matthew mentioned earlier the fact that we as an authority don't have a unitary plan uh, to be able to enforce a consistent standard across the board yet in terms of what is, uh, what is possible and what is not. And certainly, in case of the, the point that was made by Councillor Johnson earlier, um, if that was the case for Heron Road, it's certainly the case for this property in Girdful Road, where, as we saw on the site visit, the property is up for sale. Uh, the developer doesn't live there, so it's not somebody trying to make some money because, you know, because they live there. It's somebody who's renovated one house and decides to try and build another in what is, to anybody else, uh, the back garden. Um, I'm concerned, again, about the open development of the area. Uh, although the, the houses in Girdful Road have been there for many years, the houses in World Parade Close are fairly modern. They were designed with those spaces in mind, um, the existing houses as they are. Um, I see no reason why we, we as a committee, um, and we are after all the planning committee, the clue is in the name, we are here to plan to improve people's quality of life across the world. Uh, we're not here just to look at each individual application, I think, on, on its own. We also have to bear in mind the quality of life of people who live there already. Um, and certainly in the case of this committee, uh, I don't believe that this application would enhance the quality of life for the existing people in that area, people who've chosen to live there, whether it's in Gertrude Road, uh, particularly at number four, where you will be overlooked, um, whereas you know, since, the, since the house was built, you haven't been overlooked, but now you will be. And for people in number 16, I think it is well very close, uh, who will have a, a property literally almost on their doorstep. Um, I think it's uh, over development, sure, as was Heron Road earlier, uh, and depending on what the members uh, feel, uh, I'll be able to move of this application, taking into account what the lead petitioner has said and also the remarks from Councillor Thank you. Does anybody else want to make any comments? Just a very quick comment really, having been on the site visit, uh, I would accept it's nowhere near as bad as Heron Road, but it is of a similar state, but not being acceptable in my view. And I have to go along with what Trina has said, and I think she made that point very eloquently, but uh, we shouldn't really be encouraging and rubber stamping people who are merely doing development.
Now move to agenda item 5, pages 17 to 22, 15 words from the road going ahead. Can I keep another presentation please? The planning permission is sought for a two-storey side extension and direction of a detached garage at the rear of the site. The extension has a lower ridge height and is set back at first floor by one metre, ensuring compliance with policy HS11 HS or house extensions. As a corner plot, the extension does not cover more than half the width of the side garden, further ensuring compliance with policy HS11. A proposed attached garage will be located, located in the southern corner of the site adjacent to the boundary with Slaty Road. A tree preservation order is present across the site, however a tree survey has been submitted with the application and the proposals have been comprehensively assessed by the council's tree officer, who is satisfied that the development will not result in any harm to protected trees. Development is recommended for approval. Again, there's no additional connection with this application. Just a word, Council, want to speak on this? Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. By the looks of the document, um, on page 18, the reason for us being here at all is that it is the impact on trees. And we've already been told that those are okay, and Eric Bowen, who is our tree officer, has supported this. So the only reason this is before the committee at all is because of that one objection. Thank you. 
very brief comment, really, Chair. Um, I think the thing that's important is on page 24, the Heswell Society, who normally kick a fuss about these things, actually welcomed the amendments to what is already an approved, similar approved allocation. So I have no hesitation in recommending this one for approval, and I'd like to do just that. Can I just make a point first? Sure. Jim is in So this was the application that was originally submitted to us, um, and this is why the bulk of the objections came forward. So it was for five dwellings, an additional one at the top, and the, um, the proposed access of Thurston Road was deleted, and it was intended to come in uh, off West Road. So uh, following a consultation with, with, with uh, officers, the applicant then amended the site again, and has gone back to the original layout for uh, four dwellings uh, access off first road. So there is now no access off West Road. This application was subject to a number site visit on Tuesday. Planning permission was granted for a detached dwelling on this site in 2014 and that permission remains extant. This current proposal seeks permission for a change in design of house type, uh, moving away from a more traditional design that was approved in 2014 to a modern contemporary rendered and glazed trap roof for four bedrooms. Dwelling reads as a, a two-story from Piper's Lane. Uh, go back to this side. So this this is the uh, this is 103 Piper's Lane. So that's the house that's currently there, and this is the elevation that would be read from Piper's Lane. So from Piper's Lane, it reads as a two-story um, um, dwelling, but due to the sloping nature of the site and changes in land levels, a basement level is proposed on the rear elevation, which would give the appearance of three stories. The site sits entirely within the primary residential area, and as such, the principle of the dwelling on this site is acceptable. Indeed, planning permission for a dwelling on a similar footprint to that now proposed has already been approved. The site does sit adjacent to the Green Belt and also the D Coast area of special landscape value. A public footpath runs along the northwestern boundary of the site and Willow Way runs the south of the site. Sitting at the end of Piper's Lane and having regards to the site's relationship with the Greenbelt and the area of special landscape value, the new dwelling has been sensitively designed to maximise full advantage of views of the deep estuary and surrounding landscape <coughs> without negatively impacting on the area. Dwellings along Piper's Lane are all individual in scale and appearance. No house type is the same as another. 
this contemporary and modern design will add a positive element to the range and character of dwellings along the Bible's lane. Careful consideration has been given to a palette of materials that will enhance the contemporary design of the dwelling, whilst landscaping and boundary features will assist in mitigating any potential impacts on the surrounding landscape. As members who attended the site visit on Tuesday will have noted, the development has commenced on site and the basement level has been built. As such, the developer is not able to comply with conditions which require additional details to be submitted before any final commences. If members are minded to approve the application, the conditions will need to be reworded and set out on the late list so that such details are provided within one month of the building of the commission. The proposed development is considered to represent a positive contribution to the overall street scene and is recommended for approval. There is no petition or objection in connection with this application. I don't think there's a board of council here to speak on the time of this, so can I open the meeting? Street scene. 
Um, the house that was um, put down the original planning application is more in character. I can appreciate somebody wanting to have a different type of property, um, but I have to say the fact that it's right on the edge of the green belt. And if I could just quote from the Heswell Society, that they feel particularly strongly about the proposal as the application site lies on the edge of the urban area, surrounded by green belt on three sides, and is immediately alongside the permitted footpath green belt which links Heswell Dales via Pipers Lane in the Wirral Country Park and just the other side of the Wirral Way, the National Trust Land. UDP policy CH4 and GR5 are relevant to this application, as is policy LA7, which says that when considering new development at the edge of the urban area or in other locations, which would be clearly visible from the open countryside, the local planning authority will pay special regard to the visual impact of the proposals and will require that new buildings are sited, designed and landscaped in order to minimise the visual intrusion. Proposals for boundary treatment are appropriate in terms of the character of the surrounding landscape and that prominent landscape features within the landscape framework of the area are retained and enhanced. Additionally, HS4 says the proposals will be permitted subject to the provision of appropriate landscaping and boundary treatment which relates the proposed development to its surroundings paying particular attention to the maintenance of existing features and vegetation in accordance with policy GR5. If members are minded to approve, we would ask that conditions be imposed requiring reinstatement of the hedging alongside the footpaths of the Wirral Way and appropriate landscaping, especially along the boundary of the footpath. Um, members will have to judge this proposal for themselves. I think, personally, that it's out of keeping in its design not, as Councillor Johnson has said, that there should be a property there, but not necessarily for that design. I think it's far too intrusive and it's um, out of keeping. In. Yeah, it, it's, I'm <laughs> saying it's beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I, I personally think that the design is stirring. Uh, I do this. Um, it's the kind of home that you could buy ever on Wall Street if I wanted to. <laughs> It's the sort of home I would buy, um, but I'm just not convinced that it, in, in terms of the surrounding area in Piper's Lane, having done the site visit, that it's, it's exactly the right location for this kind of property. But as I say, any, any, you know, in, in other parts of the world it would be ideal, but I'm not convinced that in terms of the, the immediate vicinity, not, not least the, the proximity of the green belt, if it's ideal. Uh, but I'll, be, I'll wait to hear what the members have to say. Stuart. Just also to explore a bit more with the point uh, you made about the, the impact of the life on the, uh, on the green belt or, or what you would view of the building from, if you like, the recreation map. Um, and it wouldn't necessarily be in front of it, but it would be in front of it, which I'm not sure if it has the character that the um, suggests, which we said more about the green just about the green um, The side elevation was there. So whilst the roof is precisely got is receded and all the rest of it, so anybody looking from well underneath in the air would obviously find it interesting. Anybody at Clam Lab uh, enjoying the uh, the open space of the uh, green belt would just be faced with, with something of a, a black facade which which adds nothing uh, in my view. I'm, I'm not sure what as it impacts um, in terms of design on It's impossible, isn't it, really, to start to redesign that facade to try and meet, you know, try and uh, introduce some character into that facade. Well, at a committee meeting uh, like this, you, you either take it or, or leave it, and I guess on balance, I think it might be kind of cool. Um, This is the public footpath that runs down the side of the uh, property. Uh, along the bottom, this is the Wirral Way. Uh, this, the, the Black Edge site, is entirely in the primary residential area. And then this area here, and indeed right down Piper's Lane, swinging round here, and then all of this space here is the Green Belt. Uh, and then all of this space here is the Deep Coast um, area on special landscape value. Um, and what you have to consider as, as part of policy LA1, which deals specifically with um, special landscape value, is uh, how views not only into um, the special landscape um, area are considered, but also views out of it. Uh, so if I go back to um, this plan, oh no, sorry, that's, that's the extent of rules, so that's what's been approved on site. Um, 
this is the um, elevation that you would see um, as you walk along the uh, footpath. Um, so this is the footpath here, um, and this elevation here, you get that, that nice sort of white elevation. That's, that's what you would see along the footpath.
Now move on to agenda item 12, the age of 65 to 68, please. Matthew, can we have a presentation?